it's ironic that this very important building and this very important foray into the sciences is in a state where cloud cover will wreck the conditions for viewing four out of five nights. But this is the part, if you wanted to run with the big dogs, this is what you had to be doing. We are at the 1854 Detroit Observatory. It is the second oldest building on the University of Michigan campus. Only the President's House is older. And this was the first building built that was a dedicated scientific research facility. The building is part of a campaign to transform the University of Michigan that was first proposed by Henry Philip Tappan, who was actually the first president of the university. He didn't get here until 1852. When he did, he wanted to transform the University of Michigan into a research university. Prior to that time, Michigan was mostly a sort of provincial college where you really had to know your classical Greek and Latin and be able to stand up and recite same. And he was really enamored of the Prussian educational system. In the Prussian educational system, there was a real emphasis on not only literature, but also scientific curriculum. And you learned by doing. So not just reading from a book and standing up and reciting, but conducting experiments on your own, learning to use the tools and push the frontiers of knowledge. So you're adding something to the scientific knowledge of the whole. And so Tappan really wanted to institute that here. And in the 1850s, astronomy and observations, observatories, were fundamental to lots of other sciences, in part because the math is just ferocious. So if you understand the math to be able to operate a telescope like this, then you understand the math to move into engineering or physics or chemistry, lots of different sciences. So in the same way that today you need a biomedical engineering research center, in the 1850s, universities that wanted to be contenders needed observatories. So this was the first step and a very public commitment to taking the University of Michigan in the direction of becoming a research university, scientific research. But it was also a very savvy public relations move on Tappan's part because it's saying loud and clear, we have a commitment to scientific research at the University of Michigan. We're willing to build this building, put some of the best instruments in the world at the time, the best scientific research instruments at the disposal of faculty and students. And it's then publicized because the image of this building was engraved on letterhead. It was put on catalogs. Students talked about, oh my god, I can't believe you're going to Dartmouth. Dartmouth doesn't have an observatory. Michigan has an observatory. So it was a, a way of attracting the attention of future students. And indeed, the, the enrollment just skyrocketed. When Henry Philip Tappan wanted, proposed this building, he was approached by some folks in Detroit who were willing to help him do the fundraising. And they literally raised money by subscription. You know, people would pledge $50 or $100. $500 was a huge amount of money. When Tappan was sure that he was going to have enough money to build it, he himself went to Europe to choose the instruments. On his way to Europe, he stopped in New York City and contracted with Henry Fitz to build the big telescope in the dome. And then he went abroad and consulted with astronomers. And they suggested that this instrument, the transit instrument, be um, gotten from one of the firms in Berlin. So it's a Prussian instrument. This is before the German state. So Pister and Martins in Berlin contracted with Tappan to make this instrument. All of it's still functional. You can still open the hatches. Tappan had a budget of about mm, $24,000, give or take. And most of that money actually went into the instruments. So he's really concerned with taking a pretty modest budget and making it look much more impressive than the budget would suggest that he could. But he also understood how the tools had to function within the building. So it's not just about a pretty building. I mean, they wanted it to look good but they also needed it to function. And so you've got these piers that hold up the telescope here and in the central portion of the building. The pier is actually covered um, in stucco. And then the stucco is scored and 
the lines that you've just scored are colored in to look like big blocks of quarried stone. And in fact, in the 19th century, Ann Arbor was called the Little Stucco Village because so many of the buildings, including the university buildings, were actually brick buildings covered with stucco, scored to look like big blocks of quarried stone to evoke Greek architecture and classical Greek precedent. And so this building, it's got an archeologically correct Greek front porch, Greek revival, but then we add the Italianate overhangs, so it's a, a kind of a fashionable touch on top of the Greek. So it's very concerned with appearing part of the tradition and then carrying a little bit further. And if it looks good, that's gravy. Tappan definitely wanted it to look good, but it also had to function. Once this building came in, then we, we got a chemistry laboratory on central campus. The law school came in. Uh, engineering, the, the School of Engineering starts here in this building. They learn to use these instruments first. And the, the director here was teaching them the math they needed to carry that into physics. So really all the scientific curriculum comes out of work being done in this building. Really, it set Michigan on a path that it not only made it one of the best universities in the nation, but one of the best in the world. And that's because Henry Philip Tappan didn't dream small.